Praise God. Thank God is good, isn't he? Amen. Did you experience his presence today? Praise God. That's good. Hey, I, I don't know that I've ever, I've done a lot of fun things. I've done a lot of exciting things, but none of it really compare to here in his presence. You know? It just blows me away every time. You know, I, I don't I don't ever want to take it for granted because it just it just blows me away. How amazing it is. Praise God. Well, if you've been living like you know who you are in Christ this week. <clears throat> Have you been living like you know who God is? Yeah? This is important. I believe that if we will get these two things down as a church and as, a, as individuals, that we will understand and we will live like we know who Christ is, who we are in Christ in our lives, and who Christ is, we're going to be different people. Amen. We're going to be a different church. Amen. We're going to be a church to be reckoned with. Amen? Amen? And I'm not saying that like we're going to go out and start slaying sinners. Okay? <laughs> Almost, I'm saying that because we're gonna we're gonna go out and people are people we're gonna make a difference in people's lives because we're living that way, right? It's just gonna come. Praise God. So I hope that I hope that we consciously make an effort because I am convinced that none of these things that we do, obedience, anything, it doesn't happen unless we're intentional about it, right? It doesn't happen unless we say, "Hey, I'm going to do this." Now, yes, we need the help of the Holy Spirit. Yes, we need God's help. We need His Word in our hearts. Yes, we need all those things. But when the Lord pricks us, when, when the Lord pricks our hearts and the Holy Spirit tells us to do something, we need His power. But yes, we need to be intentional about doing it. Okay? We're not all, all of a sudden going to fall into this obedience and be like, oh, how did he here? Right? It's not going to happen that way. Okay? And so... <clears throat> I believe that there are times in our lives, not always, but I believe there are times in our lives where we can avoid this place. Right? You believe that? Yes. I believe there are times we can avoid this place. I, sometimes I put myself here. <laughs> not very smart, I know. But sometimes I put myself in between a rock and a hard place. Because of the choices that I make or the choices I don't make. Right? So most of the time, the choices I don't make are what hurt me the most. Because I let God down. I let people down. Because I chose not to be responsible. And now I'm in this rock and hard place and I don't know how to get out. And so I'm fighting and I'm, I'm trying to fight a battle that sometimes doesn't feel like it can be won, Right? And I do, I do harsh things because I feel like I'm trying fighting and trying to something to happen. And it doesn't work. So, I don't know where, why you're here today, if you are here. I don't know if you, you got there by doing what was right, because you can be put there by doing what's right as well. Okay, I want you to understand that. Just because you find yourself in between a rock and a hard place does not mean that you sinned and got there. Okay, that, that's not always the case. Sometimes you obey God and got there. How that works? But the, the thing I want to, for us to understand is, yes, we're going to find ourselves here. A lot of times in our lives. But you know, a lot of people, when they find themselves here, they just get discouraged right away. They just go into discouragement mode. Instead of understanding who God is and understanding who I am in Christ. Right? Isn't that what happens? We just get discouraged and we just want to retreat, right? We just want to, I don't know what to do. We, we, we draw. So today we're still kind of laying a foundation. Of how we will respond 
how, how are we going to do well here? How are we going to do well here? Because it is possible to do well here. Okay? I, I want us all to understand. It's, it's possible to do well here. Not always, and it's not always easy. Okay? If you're looking for easy, Jesus didn't promise that. Right? I don't want to burst anybody's bubble today, but man, I came to church so I could live an easy life. <laughs> I started following Jesus so my life could be easier. That's not going to be the case. Right? If you have your Bibles, you can turn to Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43 is where we're going to start this morning. Let's start verse 1. But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you says, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Are you listening to what God's saying to you this morning? When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. Okay, or when you're in between a rock and a hard place, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. You know what's amazing about just these short verses right here? It pretty much solidifies everything I talked about last week. Because what does he talk about just in these short, couple of short verses, three short verses? He talks about who he is. He talks about who I am. Doesn't he? Wow. Wow. So he's saying, and he sandwiches, and he sandwiches this, this rock and hard place in between, doesn't he? He starts out saying, you're mine. And then he says, when you go through these rivers of difficulty, when you're in between this rock and hard place, remember who I am. Right? But I also want to point out, it says, when you go through the deep waters. When you go through the rivers of difficulty. This is not if you find yourself here. This is, hey, you're going to find yourself here. There's no escaping it. I'd like to say, oh, you guys will never find yourselves between a rock and a hard place. It's always going to be great. You guys are going to be wonderful. And I've said that before, and I'm not going to lie to you. But when we find ourselves here... It doesn't have to be as difficult as we make it out to be. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> now, I know some of you may be saying, well, he was writing this to Jacob and Israel. And, you know, this wasn't really for us. Oh, touche. It is for you. <laughs> it is for you. All right? <clears throat> Romans chapter 11. If I, if I need to confirm what I'm saying here through Scripture. Romans chapter 11, very good book, very good chapter. It talks about the grafting in of the Gentiles into the olive, olive tree that is Israel. Right? Okay, if you haven't read it, really, really good stuff. Starting at verse 17, it says, But some of these branches from Abraham's tree... Some of the people of Israel have been broken off. And you Gentiles who were branches from a wild olive tree, you have been grafted in. So now you also receive the blessing God has promised Abraham and his children, sharing in the rich nourishment from the root of God's special olive tree. But you must not brag about being grafted in to replace the branches that were broken off. You are just a branch too. 
You're not the root. Okay? Did you get that? So, everybody says, I'm grafted in. Right? I'm grafted in. I've been grafted into the tree. Is that amazing to anybody else? So I can, I can now, he said the promises of, and blessings of Abraham are now mine. What Isaiah was saying here, he was saying to me today, because I've been grafted in. It's pretty amazing stuff. So, what do we do with this? I now have just gotten the revelation that I'm his. That he is mine. That he's my savior. The holy one of Israel. He's my holy one of Israel. See, that's what I the thing about God. I don't know how you I don't know how you go about it, but when I pray, I like to refer to him as, as mine. He's personal. He's mine. Okay? You all can call him yours too, that's fine. But he's mine. Okay, he's my savior, he's my Lord. And I want I want to recognize him as that. He's my father. But you have been grafted in. You have been grafted in. And it's not because of me that I receive the blessings. But why does every branch thrive? Why does every branch grow its leaves? Why does every branch produce fruit? Why? Because of the root. Right? So I'd like to say, stand up here and say, man, this is great. I got grafted in, man. Forget Israel. Forget this. I'm, I'm, hey, Israel, check it out. Look, I'm grafted in too. Although, I will say this. God's desire is to make the children of Israel jealous. Jealous for him. Because he's opened the door to us. They don't like that. Okay, they think we're scum. <laughs> I mean, really, to be honest. Read the Bible and see how the Jews refer to the Gentiles. It's not pleasant. Dogs, right? Even Jesus. Even Jesus told a Gentile woman, it's not good to throw the, the children's bread to the dogs. <laughs> Thanks, Jesus. You see, that all changed whenever he became a sacrifice and he grafted us in, right? Praise God. Okay, now we're going to go to 2 Peter, or 1 Peter, I'm sorry, 1 Peter, chapter 2. See, the thing I want us to get the understanding of today is who we are. Because if we're walking around and we don't know who we are, it's going to be really difficult to walk around in confidence, to walk around when we're in between this rock and hard place and, and not walk around like this with our lip dragging the ground and saying, woe is me. Right? Anybody ever been there? Nobody here, right? Nobody walks around like that. <laughs> Especially not in the church. Oh, I mean, I've walked around like that before. But the only reason, I, I, I truly feel the only reason I walk around like that is because I lose perspective of who I am in Christ and who God is and a right view of who God is. I lose that perspective. And so God is asking me to... Get that perspective back. So let's look at 1 Peter. Chapter 2, starting at verse 4. You are coming to Christ, who is the living cornerstone of God's temple. He was rejected by people, but he was chosen by God for great honor. And you are living stones. I want, you to, I want to point out all the times that it mentions what you are. You are living stones. That God is building into His spiritual people. Okay? Living stone, spiritual temple. What's more, you are His holy priest. Wow. This is good stuff, right? 
Through the meditation of Jesus Christ, you offer spiritual sacrifices that please God, as the Scriptures say. I am placing a cornerstone in Jerusalem, chosen for great honor, and anyone who trusts in Him will never be disgraced. You see, sometimes when we get in between this rock and this hard place, we feel like God has left us. Help me. We feel like God has abandoned us, forsaken us. And this says right here, it says anyone who trusts in Him will never be disgraced. Why have I felt that way? I'm not sure if that's the reason. But I would say that would be the reason why I felt disgraced because I chose to stop trusting him and started trusting myself in that position. It says, yes, you who trust him recognize the honor God has given him. Do you recognize that today? The honor God has given you? But for those who reject him, the stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. And he is the stone that makes people stumble, the rock that makes them fall. He is the stone that makes people stumble, the rock that makes them fall. Why would he be a stone that makes people stumble? You don't know why? Because in the midst of the rock and the hard place, I forget to trust Him. I forget to trust Him. Or I choose another route, so to speak. They stumble because they do not obey God's Word. Okay, I want, y'all to, I want us all to understand this is a, a reflection of us, no, not a reflection of Not obeying God's word is a reflection of our trust in Him. Okay, if we're not obeying His word, then do we really trust Him? And so they meet the faith that was planned for them. But you are not like that. Listen, you are not like that. Did you hear that? Okay, I want you to get this in your mind. You are not like that. Okay, now it's a choice. I I get to choose. Okay? I get to choose. I am not like that. I'm not going to stumble over Jesus because I don't want to do it His way. I don't want to trust Him. No. The Bible set is telling me right now, if we choose to trust Him, we choose to do it His way, then He's saying, hey, you're not like that. You're not going to be one of those people that stumble over Jesus. Anybody ever stumbled over Jesus? I have. Only because I chose to go my, go my own route. It says, but you are not like that. For you are a chosen people. Who are you? Chosen. You are a royal, you are royal priest. Who are you? You are a holy nation. Who are you? God's very own possession. Who are you? As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for He called you out of the darkness into His wonderful light. Once, listen to this, this is really good stuff. Once you had no identity as a people. Oh man, look at that. Once. Okay, everybody say once. Once. Not anymore. (laughs) Amen, not anymore. Once you had no identity as a people. But guess what? You have identity. And it's found in Jesus, right? It's not found in what other people say about you. 
It's not found in what other people think about you. It's not found in what you think about you. Once you had no identity as people, now, what's now mean? It means right now. Okay, it's time to take, it's time to take ownership of this. Amen. Now. Now is the day. Now is the day. You know that had to happen eventually. All right. Now is the day. That you are God's people. Once you received no mercy, now you have received God's mercy. Mm. That's good stuff, isn't it? I want to keep reading here. It says, now, dear friends, I warn you as temporary residents and foreigners to keep away from worldly desires that wage war against your very souls. Be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors. Then, even if they accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your honorable behavior and they will give honor to God when he judges the world. You know, I believe what God is saying here is you're going to go through trials. You're going to go through struggles. You're going to go through difficulty. You're going to find yourself in between a rock and a hard place. But don't respond like the world responds. You're temporary residents. You're foreigners to this world. Don't respond like that. But respond like people that know who you are in Christ. Respond like people that know who God is in your life. According to His Word. But you see, we, we see, and I mean, there are, there are some that rejected God's teaching and have found themselves in between a different rock. We see the Pharisees found themselves there. We see the children of Israel. Look at the rock and hard place they were in for 40 years. Wandering through the wilderness. Why? Because of the rebellion. Because they refused to accept who they were. They were God's chosen people. They refused to accept that. They refused to accept who God was. And they just kept on wandering. Over and over and over again. They found themselves in bondage. They found their, their nation dismantled. Many times throughout history. Why? Because they forgot these two things. But the Bible says you are not like that. <coughs> You're not like that. You've been picked for the team. How many remember sitting, going out on the playground and you're always the last one to get picked? Do huh? you remember anybody here like that? You know, maybe you're the first one. You don't remember that. But you're always the last one to get picked. Well, I want you to know Jesus picked you. He didn't wait till last either. You're on the team. But he didn't call you to be on the team to just warm the bench. Right? He called you to be a contributor to the team. Isn't that good? Are you excited about being a contributor to his kingdom and his church? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now I want to finish with this scripture this morning and a story about someone in scripture. It says in Deuteronomy chapter 30 and verse 10, The Lord your God will delight in you. If you obey his voice and keep the commands and decrees written in the book of instruction. And if you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and soul. Did you hear that? So when I'm right here, okay, I don't know. I, I, I'm thinking that there's some people that are here right now. Is any, can anybody testify to that? Is anybody in between a rock and a hard place in this moment in their lives? Anybody? All right. We got a few. Okay, and you, you are finding yourself here, but I, I'm, I want to encourage you today. The Lord your God will delight in you. The Lord your God will delight in you. 
If you obey his voice and keep the commands and decrees written in the book of, this, of, of instruction, and if you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Now, the reason why you're saying, well, you know, that seems conditional. Well, the thing is, is when you have an understanding of who God is and you know who you are in Christ, this is going to be your response. This is it right here. And then the Lord, after you make that response because you know who you are and you know who God is, then the Lord is going to delight in you. How many like, I'd like God to delight in me. <laughs> yeah. Come on, God, delight in me. We sing that song every once in a while. Delight. I won't sing. I won't sing. Delight in me, oh God, delight in me. Right? Like God is saying, well, if you'll do this, Pretty awesome, huh? But really, doing that, if we're, if we're in the right condition, if we're in the right position, where we know who we are, we know who Christ is, then it's going to be our response anyway, right? But are there times, as I mentioned before, that we can avoid the place or position of being between a rock and a hard place? Yes, I think there is. Again, I believe that we can be a fierce church today if we can get these two things and we can actually live by them. I don't want this to be a message that we just, we hear and then by the end of the year it's like, what? What do you say? I want to keep this in front of us as a church because I, I believe that this can be life changing for this church and for us if we truly, truly invest ourselves in knowing these two things. So, I want to share with you, yes, you can find yourself here. You can put yourself in this position. How many of you guys know a man named Samson? Okay, there was a man named Samson in the Bible. Not, didn't always make the best decisions, right? He kind of made some bad choices. How many have made some bad choices? Yeah. <laughs> Yep, I have. <laughs> we've got a leg up again here. <laughs> we've, we've made bad choices, right? And we put ourselves right here before. And Samson was a person that we can look at as an example of, of doing the right thing and doing the wrong thing, right? I'm not saying he was completely bad. I mean, he was God's chosen. Sometimes he just forgot about that a lot, Right? I mean, really, if we look at this from these two things of Samson's life, we look at it and we say, hmm, Samson kind of lost who he was here, didn't he? He kind of lost his identity when he, went, when he did this. He kind of lost who God was when he did this. Because what, what we know about Samson is he was a little girl crazy. <laughs> How many men have gotten in trouble being girl crazy? All right. But Samson was a little girl crazy, and he got himself into some trouble a few times. But there's one specific time that I want to share. This was a, a time where he met a woman named Delilah. He met this woman, and she looked good to him. I mean, you know, you should never choose your wife over that reason. Okay, that's a, that's a bonus. Yes. But, if that's the number one reason, man, you, it may be hard in the future. It may be hard in the future, right? All right, so he, he it's the, it actually says about he looked good to her, so he wanted, he, he wanted her. It didn't say that he married her, okay? It, it doesn't say in the Bible that he married Delilah. It just said that he stayed with her overnight. Okay? And... So here he is, he's in this position that he has put himself, and she's a Philistine woman, the enemy of Israel, basically. And so he is shacking up with her, bad decision, right? And he is now, and, and she's the enemy of Israel. Two bad choices. Okay, even his parents told him. I know, I know when we're in the moment, we think our parents don't know nothing. 
right? We don't think, we think our parents know absolutely nothing, right? I remember when I was a kid, my mom would be warning me about girls. I'd be like, oh, mom, you don't know, right? <coughs> but praise God, that never worked out. My mom was right. <laughs> my mom was right. But none of us want to admit that. But I'll admit it today. I wouldn't admit it then. So, but here, here is Samson. He made this choice. And now, Delilah comes to him three different times and says, Samson, tell me how you, what your strength is. And Samson's like, well, if you wrap my hands in new, new ropes, then I'll be as weak as any man. I mean, really, who's going to believe that? New ropes, that's what's going to do it. He'd actually already been tied up with new ropes prior to this time. I guess the Lila didn't know him then. But, of course, you know, three times Samson tells her something different. And three times Samson wakes up and beats up the Philistine men that came after him. Okay, now, by this time, you know, you think Samson would be like, hey, I'm privy to this. I'm not going to sleep, and I'm not going to fall through your tricks this time, Delilah. No. It's just like all of us, man, right? We just kind of lose sight of things. We look in their pretty eyes, and we're like, what? Huh? You know? <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't know what you're saying here. And we kind of just, our brain falls on the floor, and we're like, oh, look, a ball. And we start playing with it. No, man, I don't know. There's, you know, just times we can lose focus when it comes to getting googly eye, right? It's called googly eye. All right. So here he is. Here he is. And then, so finally she, she annoys him to death. Okay, so I mean, Samson actually says that. He says, you're annoying me to death. Okay. You, you are basically, you're almost, you're wanting, I'm basically at the point where I want to die because you won't leave me alone. All right? And so he finally says, I have a Nazarite vow. I have a vow with God. And if anybody cuts my hair, Samson just had a revelation, didn't he? I'm God's. At that moment, though, he should have said, I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be here, Delilah. I'm packing my things and I'm going back home. If you want to get married, maybe this will work. Right? But I, I'm leaving here. But he didn't get that. And so, Delilah all sleeps in the sleep. Man, this is, a, this is one deep secret too, man. I'll tell you what. And while he's sleeping, he, she, she has somebody come in and shaves his head. And so, here come the Philistine men again. They come in and say, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. This time he thinks, well, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to do exactly what I did before. But what happens? He wakes up, they gouge his eyes out, and they take him as prisoner. He's like, oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, there's nothing up there. What's going on? Right? So, here's Samson. I've mentioned this before, but here's the, here's the problem with what Samson was doing. He lost his view of who God was. And he lost his view of who he was in Christ. He lost his view, right? For one, I've said before, you know, a lot of people say, well, yeah, it was Samson's hair. But I, I, truly, I truly believe that God took his strength away because Samson actually thought it was his hair. If you look at all the, 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 the times in Scripture where Samson became strong, it says the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. So, here's Samson. They bring him into a party. He's literally almost between a rock and a hard place. He's stuck right in between these two pillars that are probably about six foot around in diameter, and he's stuck right there. And they're mocking him. They say, basically, the Bible basically says he was their entertainment. And all he's doing was standing there with chains on. But because they wanted Samson dead so badly, and they, they wanted him in this position so badly, 
They're like, oh man, this is, this is something to celebrate. And so he was literally right here. But you know, at the end of his life, he figured it out, didn't he? He's like, wait a minute, my mom and dad taught me about God. I know that God has been with me. So may I have to cry out this one last time to God Almighty. I'm going to respond in this way. I'm going to respond by crying out to Almighty God. Yeah, my hair is not there. I realize now that God is my strength. God, this one last time, God, will you give me strength so I can defeat these enemies? And what happens? He pushes the pillars out. The ceiling falls in and kills more people than he had killed his whole life of being alive. <clears throat> so, Samson made the right choice in the end. Do you think he could have helped himself along the way and not found himself there? Yeah. He could have helped himself by knowing who he was in Christ. By not doing what God had said was evil. Right? See, that's part of knowing, having a right view of God. Well, God says this is evil, so I shouldn't do it. And if I truly believe God is all knowledgeable and all wise, then I take him at his word and I say, okay, God, you said this was evil, then I won't do it. So, this morning, here we are. I want to encourage you this week as you're trying to get to this place where you understand who you are in Christ, this book is going to help you. Okay, if you're not reading this book on a daily basis, Please start. Okay, this is important reading. More important than any other reading, more important than any TV show you watch, more important than anything. This book is important. You're going to find out who you are in Christ by reading this book. If you want to know who God is, a right view of who God is, don't listen to the preachers on TV, even though that sometimes they get it right. Okay? But if you don't aren't if you aren't savvy on this. You're going to be misled, right? It's okay if you're founded, you have your foundation laid right to listen to them because then they're not going to lead you astray. Okay, but this book is going to give us a right view of God. So don't listen to society, don't listen to our culture, but let this tell you who God is. All right? Go ahead and stand with me this morning. This is a this is a time in our lives where we say we're, I, I believe that we're at a crossroads. We're at this crossroads. I want if everybody can just get that in their head right now. Just if you want to close your eyes and just picture this crossroads. In one way, one way is your way. It's a way where you get to define God for who He is and you get to define who you are and you find your identity in everything else besides who God says you are. And then there's this other road. There's this other road that, that Jesus has already paved the way for. It's a straight, it's a narrow road, yes. So it's difficult, it's difficult even to see sometimes because sometimes the, the weeds are growing up over it so we can't recognize it. But this is a road that leads to life. And it's not just life in the end, like eternal life. But it's, it's also life every day, even when we find ourselves in between the rock and the hard place, we can find life on this road. Because we have chosen, this road will help us to give us the right view of who God is, and it will also help us to know who we are in Christ. But it's my choice today. Like I said, you're at a crossroads, and, and we all have to make a choice of which way we're going to go. 
There's no reason to wait any longer. You say, well, Pastor, that all sounds good, but you know, maybe a month or two down the road when I'm, I'm a little more ready. What if a month or two down the road doesn't come? I'm not saying it's not. I'm not trying to scare you into doing this. But what if it doesn't come? I'm not guaranteed tomorrow. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. So the crossroad is right before you. Which way are you going to choose? What mindset, what perspective do you want to have in life? The Lord is calling us, church. I, I am convinced that there is no mistake in the messages that we hear in this church. There's no mistake in the messages that God lays on the hearts of His people. And God is calling us to be a church that has the right perspective. I'm going to let you make that choice in your heart today. But it's between you and God. Between you and God right now. But, you know, I, I say that, but it's really not between you and God, is it? If your relationship between you is just between you and God, then we're failing as believers, aren't we? If, you're, if we're secret service Christians, we're failing as Christians, aren't we? Jesus died publicly. He went to the cross in front of everybody. Why did Jesus go to the cross? Because he had a right view of who the Father was. And he knew who he was. So this morning, you're at a crossroads. What choice will you make? choice is yours. We may not see it today, what choice you made, but we'll see it. God will see it. God already sees it. But here we are. I want to pray a prayer of help from God today. Because we need His help to be able to do this. Father, God, you see the hearts of your children today, God. Lord, you have called us today. You have called us out, Lord. You have told us who we are. God, you have called us royal priests. You have called us a holy nation. You have called us your chosen people. You have called us, Lord. And you said that we once were something else. But now, now, Lord, now, God, we are who you say we are. Our identity is now in you. Father, I pray, God, that every person across this sanctuary this morning would have the understanding, God, that, Lord, you would just give them understanding, Lord God. As they read through your word, Lord, as they, as they seek to understand who you are. A right view of who you are, God. As they seek to understand who you have made them, who you have called them to be. And God, that they would, Lord, that we would all, God, surrender to that, God. That we would all bow down to that. What you have declared. Help us, God. Lord, we need your help, God, keeping this on our hearts, keeping this in our minds. Recognizing who we are, God, when we're in tough spots. 
So, Lord, we just pray right now, God. Anoint each person, Father God, with the understanding of who you are, of who they are in you. God, we give you praise. We give you thanks, God, for moving in our hearts and in our lives. God, for living in this church and making us everything you want us to be. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. So glad y'all are here today. Remember, we have man, a man meeting right now. If you can stick around. We won't start without you. We'll make sure you stick around. Y'all just kind of fill up the first couple of rows up here. We'll, we'll meet Brandon and Charlie. And then if a couple guys, a few guys can stick around too. We're going to load up the old log cabin in the Charlie's horse trailer this morning. So.